Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. Ciao ragazzi! Hi guys! I'm Desiree. Welcome to 10 ways to remember words. Associo parole nuove con parole che suonano simili nella mia lingua madre. I associate new words with words that sound similar in my native language. Ok, for example, yeah, we have with English and Italian a lot of words that are similar. For example, lingua, language, linguaggio. Cerco di usare la lingua abitualmente nel contesto della vita quotidiana. I try to use the language routinely in the context of daily life. Let's say you're washing the dishes and you think, oh, how do I say washing the dish in Italian? And then you start thinking about how to say that. Lavare i piatti. Just think about the things that you are doing and how you would explain them in the new language. Dico parole ad alta voce in modo che io possa davvero sentirle. I say words out loud so that I can actually hear them. This is a great thing to do. Like, my problem with English, especially in the beginning, I didn't really talk English, I didn't speak that with anyone, and that was a problem because I still now... Maybe if I hear a word, I know what it means, but then when I, I have to say that, I'm not sure about how to pronounce that. So yeah, practice to say words out loud. Guardo spesso i video in TV o su YouTube che sono stati progettati per i bambini. I often watch TV or YouTube videos that are designed for young children. Yeah, this is a great way because, for example, cartoons, so things that are for children, they make you understand what they're doing without saying that. Also, you should try watching something that you watched already so you can understand how to say the same thing that you already know in the new language that you're studying. I would do that. Imparo l'origine delle parole e come le diverse parole sono legate le une alle altre. I learn about the roots of words and how words are related to each other. For example, parole in Italian words and parlare, speak, it's the same root, same origin, the same radice, we would say, par, parola, par, parlare. Io uso le ripetizioni, leggere, scrivere e pronunciare le parole più e più volte. I use repetition, reading, writing and speaking words over and over again. Be careful with repetitions because, for example, to me, uh, after I repeat a word a lot of time, I'm like, does this word really exist? <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure anymore about the word itself. So yeah, do that, but maybe with a lot of words, not just one per time. Keep them written somewhere. So even later you can check if you know the words and actually see your improvements. Parlo il più spesso possibile con i madrelingua. I speak as often as possible with native speakers. Maybe also if they don't correct you because they're not teachers or because they just want to talk, it's still useful to see if they at least understand what you're trying to say. So don't worry about mistaking because it's okay and be careful not to switch to another language just because it's easier. Keep focused on using the new language. Provo a pensare in italiano così che diventi naturale. I try to think in Italian so it becomes natural to my thought process. I would advise you to do that at the end of the day, like trying to think in the new language about what you did today. In order to go to school, I was waiting for the bus. Per andare a scuola stavo il bus. Mm, what's waiting again? And you don't remember? You can check it, write it down, you will remember faster. Aspettare, by the way, if you want to know. Stavo aspettando il pullman. Ascolto canzoni e memorizzo i testi. I listen to songs and memorize the lyrics. This is a good thing to do because sometimes when you're listening to songs maybe you don't really understand what they're saying so it's good to search for lyrics. Try to sing along with them the next time you hear the song so you see if you really know, if you really learned the word. Because sometimes in songs singers use words or expressions that we don't use in daily life. Be careful about that, but still it's a great exercise. Cerco di usare la parola nuova in una frase semplice, così imparo frasi intere e non solo singole parole. I try to use the new word in a simple sentence, so I learn whole phrases and not just individual words. When you learn a word, let's say for example telephone, 
you can think about a phrase. Um, I use the telephone to call my friends. Uso il telefono per chiamare i miei amici. And if you think about something in particular, like I use the telephone to call my cousin. Uso il telefono per chiamare i miei, mio. You can search for that word too, so you will learn another new word. Uh, if you're wondering, cousin is cugino. That was the last of our 10 ways to remember words. Tell me which way is yours. Of course, everyone has a personal way. So tell me which is yours. And if you have any advice, comment and remember to subscribe. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye. Keep focused on using the new language. For some, learning a new language seems to come naturally. For others, the entire process feels more like a tooth and nail struggle. However, if you've had a negative experience learning a new language at one point in time, don't let that discourage you from trying again. The truth is that learning any language is never easy, but it's definitely possible. Sometimes the difference between success and failure has less to do with your abilities or talents and a lot more to do with the way you look at things. In this video, we're going to look at how to avoid five serious mistakes made by new language learners. Number one, listen before you speak. Being slow to speak and quick to listen is good life advice, whether or not you're learning a foreign language. Effective listening is essential to communication. As a beginner, there is a tendency to concentrate so much on what you're going to say and how you're going to say it that you can completely miss the meaning or heart of what the other person is trying to communicate. Not only will this impair your ability to listen in your target language, it will also stall what little conversation you had going. Remember that conversations are a two-way street. If you're speaking more than listening, then you actually have more of a monologue on your hands than a dialogue. The inputs of language learning, listening and reading, are just as important as the outputs, speaking and writing. For a beginner, inputs are even more crucial, as they are the main way you acquire new vocabulary. We even go so far to say that for new students, the best method for learning involves more listening than it does speaking, though that may change with higher proficiency levels. Number two, don't be embarrassed when you do speak. People's next mistake usually comes from the other side of the spectrum, where new learners are too scared or embarrassed to contribute to a conversation. The fear of making mistakes and embarrassing yourself can paralyze your language learning. It's vital to remember that everyone makes mistakes. Even native speakers had to find their way through the language when they were children. Making mistakes while learning a new language is inevitable, but it's also a good thing. The faster you make mistakes, the quicker you can correct them and move on with your learning. So instead of being afraid to make mistakes, try looking at them as steps towards progress. In reality, that's what they really are. Number three, don't fixate on minor issues. If taken in all at once, a new language can feel overwhelming to learn. It's so easy to get discouraged by all your little mistakes and conversational mishaps and you lose sight of the progress you're making. In addition to mistakes, you'll also come across plateaus, where you study and practice consistently but don't see any results for a significant amount of time. But whether you face errors or plateaus, remember that these things are minor obstacles on the road to fluency. The most important thing is not to give up, stick with it. If you stay persistent, your mistakes will be corrected and your abilities will improve. But if you slow down or throw in the towel completely, then you'll either subvert your progress or nix it altogether. So remember that as long as you're still studying and learning the language, you can't lose. It might feel like you're losing the battle for language learning for a little while, but hang in there. A practical way to help you stay motivated is to make small weekly goals. Research shows that goal setting has a significant impact on learning. Try picking one aspect of grammar or a collection of new words or phrases to study for the next seven days. At the end of the week, check your progress and measure your success. Setting little benchmarks like this will give you a rightful sense of accomplishment. Number four, remember that immersion isn't magical. A lot of people think that by moving to a foreign country, they will learn the language by osmosis. But whether you learn abroad or at home, you still need to study and practice the language. Living in a new country gives you way more opportunities to do this than staying at home. But if you don't consciously take advantage of these opportunities while living abroad, it won't benefit your language learning. If you're an expat living in a foreign country, there's a natural inclination to hang out around other expats. Learning a language and living in a foreign culture is hard and uncomfortable. 
For better or worse, we're often drawn to the easier road. If you made the decision to study abroad, then you want to hang out with native speaking people as much as possible. You have the rest of your life to be with people who speak your language. This doesn't mean ignore your expat friends. Just be sure that you're giving proper attention to your language learning. Languages are better lived than they are learned. Number five, be open-minded. Languages are better lived than they are learned. When learning a new language, your brain will want to conform the new grammar and vocabulary to your native language norms and grammar rules. Ignore your brain on this one. At first, you might feel completely wrong saying a sentence that is in fact correct. After a certain point in language learning, there is a switch that goes off. When your brain finally realizes that you're not speaking your native language, but a new one altogether. This could take a while though, especially if this is your first time learning a new language. Until then, do what you know is correct, even if it feels a bit weird when you say it. The same goes for culture. Just as you want to be open to the differences in the language, don't forget to be open to the differences in the culture too. Hopefully this video helped you shift your thinking and approach language learning in a way that will help you become fluent faster. And that you'll learn to enjoy the journey towards fluency and savor the language for its own sake. That's probably the biggest language learning secret there is. And for even more ways to get started learning a new language, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Hi guys! Ciao ragazzi! In this video, you're gonna learn the 10 phrases that you never want to hear. So I hope you will never hear them. But just in case, I will tell you, so you know what to expect. Dobbiamo parlare. We need to talk. Dobbiamo parlare. We need to talk. This is really not a good phrase, because it means probably you did something wrong. So yeah, dobbiamo parlare. It's not good. Like maybe if it's your partner, maybe he wants or she wants to break up with you, or if it's your parents and you're still a teenager, maybe they discovered something, some lies you told them. Dobbiamo parlare. Mi hai mentito. You lied to me. Or ho scoperto una cosa. I discovered something. I got to know something. I got you, basically. Dovremmo vedere altre persone. We should see other people. Dovremmo vedere altre persone. I would prefer if people told me I want to break up. It's better than I think we should meet someone else. Grazie per il suo curriculum. Tuttavia il posto è già stato assegnato. Thank you for your resume. However, the position has been filled. Already. Grazie per il suo curriculum. Tuttavia il posto è già stato assegnato. And they really seem like sorry for you. I don't know if they really are. They at least try to be, but you can tell that they don't really care. If the first person we choose broke a leg, the second one is going to Hawaii, and the third one discovered to be rich and is now gonna party with Barack Obama, or the fourth one was, don't know, selected to be the new president of the moon, that means that probably the next are you. In any case, we're gonna let you know. That's better because at least you don't wait for ages, hoping for something. Hai messo su peso recentemente? Have you gained weight recently? Hai messo su peso recentemente? Have you gained weight recently? Yeah, I mean, people don't usually say that to you. Like, they pretend not to notice, they don't make you notice, or maybe they even tell you, oh my god, you're so skinny now. But it's not true, they just want to be nice. Hai un capello grigio. You have a grey hair. Hai un capello grigio. You have a grey hair. Actually, maybe it's you have two hai, hai un capello bianco. So you have a white hair. And that's worse. That means you're aging or that you're very stressed. But it's not something that people want to hear, especially women, I would say. Yeah, in Italian, if you talk about all the hair, it's capelli and it's plural. If you're just talking about one, it's capello, and yeah, you can say is. So capello è bianco. Hair is 
bianco. It's white. Non sei tu, sono io. It's not you, it's me. Non sei tu, sono io. It's not you, it's me. This is another way to break up. To say, it's not your fault, it's not about you. I am the problem. But still, I don't want to stay with you. Basically, you don't want to discuss things. So you're like, yeah, it's not you, it's me. That's it. We're done. Oggi non ho i tuoi soldi. I don't have your money today. Oggi non ho i tuoi soldi. Today, I don't have your money. Probably you don't want to ask people that have to give you money, to give you money back. It's them who should say something to you. That's why they would say, he or she would say, I don't have your money today. Non ho i tuoi soldi. Oggi non ho i tuoi soldi. But let's hope they have it the next day. So you can say, it's okay, give me money when you have. Okay, dammi soldi quando li hai. Or, next time we meet, I want my money. La prossima volta che ci vediamo, voglio i miei soldi. Scusa, mi sono dimenticato. Sorry, I forgot. I always prepare a little, a small water bottle. Bottle of water, pet bottle. And, yeah, put it in the fridge. I'm so happy, yeah, we'll have fresh water. And then, nope. I forget, and that's just, ah, I forgot, okay, but it's not sorry in this case. Sei licenziato, you are fired. Sei licenziato, you are fired. Basically, if you didn't do something big, probably no one would tell you that way. They would be like, I'm sorry, we need to cut the expenses, we need to be, I don't know, to be less people, not like, you're the worst, you're gonna be fired, nope. Probably you did something, you set fire to computers in the office, you, you know, made a pool inside the office and you were having a fire, I don't know, you did something. But usually people don't go to you like, you're fired, sei licenziato. Means something big happened. Te l'avevo detto io, I told you so. Te l'avevo detto io, I told you so. You can also say just, te l'avevo detto, or l'avevo detto io, or l'avevo detto. So, te and io are not really important. The important part is l'avevo detto, means told you. So, if you were having that party inside the office, and your colleague says to you, maybe it's better if you don't do that, you're gonna get fired. And then the boss comes and it's like, you're fired, sei licenziato. In that case, that colleague can say, Te l'avevo detto io, I told you so. That was the last of the words that we don't want to hear. I hope you will actually never hear them. That's it for today. Thank you for watching. Comment and remember to subscribe. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want to speak real Italian from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at italianpod101.com. So, you decided to learn a new language. At first, the idea seemed exciting. You bought a phrase book, dictionary, and a subscription to an online class, ready to dive headfirst into the language. For the first day or two, all was well. You gained ground quickly, learning a few basic phrases and words. A week before, learning that language was just a dream, but now you're actually doing it. Then, the third and fourth day roll around. The excitement is wearing off. You encouraged yourself to continue, and another week or two goes by, but with a lot less progress. Suddenly, learning a new language doesn't fill you with excitement anymore. Now it feels more like dread. Sometimes it feels like you're drowning in grammatical cases, verb conjugations, and wonky pronunciation. It all seems too much to handle, so you start to think about giving up. But we encourage you not to give up. Learning a foreign language is difficult. We won't pretend like it isn't. But that doesn't mean you can't do it. Sometimes you just need to take a step back, reevaluate your approach, and come back to the language with a different perspective. In this video, we'll look at four tips for when learning a new language feels overwhelming. Number one, set aside a designated study time. Consistency is key when learning a foreign language. Studying 15 minutes seven days a week will benefit you more than cramming in two hours one day a week. Set aside an amount of time that works best for you. If you can afford to spend an hour every day learning, that's awesome, go for it. But don't feel bad if you can't spend that much time. Even 10 or 15 minutes a day goes a long way. 
breaking up your learning into manageable time segments will relieve a lot of the stress that can come with studying a new language. Learning is not a race. Go at your own pace and try not to compare your progress with anyone else's. Number two, take it one bite at a time. Now that you have your schedule under control, it's time to focus on what you'll actually be studying. It's recommended that every one to two weeks, you focus on learning a very specific piece of the language. It could be a conjugation group, a case, tense, or a collection of theme vocabulary. Whatever you choose, hone in on it and do your best to feel comfortable with it before you move on to something else. Ever heard the saying, how do you eat an elephant? Focusing on one thing at a time helps you break the language into digestible chunks. Number three, expose yourself to the language in different ways. Don't just sit around reading about grammar all day. Obviously, knowledge of grammar is important, but you want to spice up your practice as much as possible. In addition to grammatical study, try to mix in a combination of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. Try to practice reading by either translating a simple article into your native language, or maybe if you're a beginner, pick up a children's book in your target language. For writing, you can try to write out a fictional conversation between you and yourself, even. Use the phrases you know to create a mock conversation, and don't use any words you can't think of or you don't remember. To practice speaking, you can find native speakers locally at a language club or at a meetup. You can also find them online in a language exchange. For listening, a great podcast should do the trick. Spread out each type of practice, listening, reading, speaking, and writing across your regular language study schedule. This will give you a balanced experience in the language and should help keep things interesting. This method also works well when you use it to focus on a single aspect of the language like we talked about above. Number four, set mini goals, not just big ones. If your only language learning goal is to be fluent, you're likely setting yourself up for disappointment. While speaking fluently can be your ultimate goal, it shouldn't be your only one. Try to set mini goals month by month and week by week. It could be something simple. Learn 20 new verbs, practice a new case, or speak with three native speakers. As long as it's specific and reasonable to achieve in a shorter amount of time, it should work fine. Not having mini goals alongside your ultimate goal is a lot like sprinting across a huge open field. There's no reference point, so for much of the time, it feels like you're not any closer to your goal. It's not that you're not moving forward, it just feels like you're not. Without any trees or buildings to run past, it seems like you're running in place. Mini goals are like the trees and buildings of your language race. They help you see that you're moving forward and give you a sense of accomplishment. The desire for perfection can get in the way of your progress. Don't freak out when you struggle to speak or make a mistake. It's all a part of the learning process. Also, don't be afraid to speak, even if you know what you'll say won't be totally correct. It's better to do your best to communicate in the language and get it wrong than to never try at all. Learning a new language isn't always easy. In fact, oftentimes it's very hard. Don't let that discourage you though. Use these tips to help keep you focused yet unstressed in your language learning. A little perseverance will go a long way. Before long, you'll be speaking better than you may have thought was possible. And for even more help learning a new language without getting overwhelmed, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye. Want to speak your target language with confidence and impress native speakers? When learning to speak a new language, you have lots of things to think about, including grammar, vocabulary, and pronunciation. Because you're thinking of all of these things and trying to speak, it can be difficult to communicate with confidence, especially in the beginning. This is why it's helpful to make confidence building exercises part of your language learning process. In this video, you'll learn seven ways to boost your confidence. One, read out loud. This might seem pretty basic, but it's a great way to practice speaking. Reading aloud lets you practice speaking without having to think about grammar or things to talk about. Reading out loud lets you focus on your pronunciation and the rhythm of the language. It can help you learn to speak more smoothly and quickly without even thinking about it. 
If you're using our lessons, read the dialogue out loud as you listen. You can read along with the dialogue tool, the lesson notes, or the transcript. Two, read like a child. This might sound strange, but think about children learning to read. They go slow and sound everything out. Maybe it takes two or three tries before they read a new word smoothly, and a few more tries before they can read it at a natural pace. This example applies to language learning, too. If you find a complex sentence in something you're reading, read it slowly at first, then speed up. With practice, you'll be able to say it easily. It might feel a bit silly to speak very slowly, but this kind of practice can help you identify tough sounds you might miss or say incorrectly when reading quickly. Three, use the dialogue breakdown tool. If you're using our site, this is a great tool to take advantage of. It breaks down lesson conversations into individual lines. You can listen to the audio for each line, learn what each line means, and can reread and review as much as you want. Four, Use the voice recorder to record and compare yourself with native speakers. Just click on the microphone icon next to each line in the dialogue section. You can use this tool to perfect your pronunciation if you like, but this is also something you can use to work on speaking with confidence at native level speed. You'll find this tool in the dialogue section of all of our lessons. Five, repeat and review old lesson conversations. Reviewing what you've studied in the past is the best way to make sure you maintain what you've learned. Go back to older lessons, download the lesson dialogue tracks, and re-listen to the conversations again and again. Or you can reread the dialogue lines from previous lessons until you've mastered them all. Six, shadow conversations. Repeat what you hear out loud. This tactic is important, but it can be tricky when you're doing a brand new lesson. If you're reviewing dialogues from lessons you've done know, it's super easy to do. Just listen to the dialogue and repeat what you hear. Shadowing means mimicking the speaker as soon as they speak, following their intonation and rhythms as closely as possible. Seven, send recordings to your Premium Plus teacher. If you wanna speak with confidence, there's no better confidence boost than feedback from a native speaker. And you get just that with a Premium Plus teacher. You can record yourself reciting a lesson dialogue or any dialogue of your own, and your teacher will give you specific tips on how to improve. From the tips your teacher gives you, choose at least one and practice, practice, practice. Being able to react quickly and with confidence in a conversation is typically not something you can do on your first try, but if you continue practicing, you'll gradually find yourself speaking with ease. And for even more ways to build your speaking confidence, check out our complete language learning program. Sign up for your free lifetime account by clicking on the link in the description. Get tons of resources to have you speaking in your target language. And if you enjoyed these tips, hit the like button, share the video with anyone who's trying to learn a new language, and subscribe to our channel. We release new videos every week. I'll see you next time. Bye! Ciao ragazzi! Hi guys, I'm Desiree. And today we're gonna learn the 10 hardest words to pronounce. I hope I can manage somehow. Aiuto, help. Aiuto, help. This is a really helpful word because you can ask for help. For example, aiuto, sono chiuso dentro al bagno. Help, I'm locked inside the bathroom. You're not dying and you don't need help quickly. You just want to ask if people can help you. That would be aiutare. Puoi aiutarmi, per favore? Can you help me, please? Chiacchierare. Chat. Chiacchierare. Chat. The most common error mistake would be chiacchierare instead of chiacchierare. Cinque. Five. Cinque. Five. In one hand, there are five fingers. Ci sono cinque dita in una mano. Uno, due, tre, quattro, cinque. Ghiaccio. Ice. Ghiaccio. Ice. Be careful because if you don't pronounce G as a hard sound like G, it would be giaccio, that it's a verb and means lie down. Vuoi del ghiaccio nel tuo drink? Do you want some ice in your drink? A word that you can hear a lot, especially in summer, is ghiacciolo. It's an ice stick. I eat them a lot because it's so hot and some ice, flavored ice, it's great. Già, already. Già, already. 
Ja has two meanings. First one, already, sono già le sette. It's, it's seven already. To express consent would be like, oggi fa proprio caldo. Today is really hot. Già, yeah, really, indeed. Another example would be, hai già finito? Did you finish already? Lasciare, leave. Lasciare, leave. I left my key on the table. Ho lasciato le mie chiavi sul tavolo. Yeah, another meaning would be break up. For example, I don't want to break up with my boyfriend. Non voglio lasciare il mio ragazzo. When I go jogging, I leave my wallet home. Quando vado a correre, quando vado a jogging, lascio il portafogli a casa. Quando vado a correre, lascio il portafogli a casa. Pesca, peach. Pesca, peach. Yeah, for example, I ate a peach. Ho mangiato una pesca. Il tè alla pesca è il mio preferito. Peach tea is my favorite. Pesca, fishing. Pesca, fishing. Pesca, pesca. You don't open your mouth like pesca, but pesca. And this one is the hobby you can have, for example. I really enjoy going fishing. Mi piace molto andare a pesca. So the difference would be pesca and pesca. Mangio pesce più volentieri che andare a pesca. I enjoy eating fish more than fishing. Segno. Sign. Mark. Stain. Signal. Here the difficult is probably the sound ny that you can practice with gnomo, for example, that it's elf, gnome. Hai lasciato il segno. You really left the mark, you really impressed them. It's something that you would say. Yeah, segno has many meanings in, in English. Un segno sul muro, a stain on the wall. Give me a signal, fammi un segno. Be careful not to say segno, but segno because there is no I. And basically, in Italian, there is no word with both I and O after Ñ. That was the last of our 10 hardest words to pronounce. I hope I was able to give you some advice. If you still have questions or if you still have words that you're not sure about how to pronounce, please write it down and remember to subscribe. Ciao, ciao. Bye, bye. They're making a melody. With bed. Hi guys, ciao ragazzi, I'm Desiree, sono Desiree, and today I'm gonna tell you 10 phrases that make you look like a fool. So basically avoid them, don't say that. But not just in Italian, in every kind of language. Basta fare quello che dico, just do what I say. Well, at least give explanation. <laughs> in both cases, if you are the one being told this phrase, i would say both of you look full, but yeah, don't say that. Basta fare quello che dico, just do what I say. È troppo difficile, non provarci nemmeno. It's too hard, don't even try. È troppo difficile, non provarci nemmeno. It's too hard, don't even try. It means you don't trust the other person, you don't have confidence in what they do. And yeah, that's bad. I mean, that's sad. For you who say that, because you should tell people to try, at least. And for the one who's been told that, it's like, hey, who do you think I am? I can do something. Io ho ragione e tu torto. I'm right and you are wrong. Io ho ragione e tu hai torto. I'm right and you are wrong. I would like to make you notice that in Italian, as for the years, for example, for right and wrong too, you use the verb to have. Yeah, it's sad to say that anyway. It's like you don't want to talk about things anymore. You don't want to explain why you think so. And you just say, yeah, I'm right, you're wrong. That's it. Your ragione tu hai torto, è così. Noi non possiamo farlo. We can't do that. Noi non possiamo farlo. We can't do that. Trying is the best way to know if you really can or not. There is also an impersonal way to say that, like, non si può fare. It can't be done. Basically, yes. It can't be done. Non si può fare. Non avrai mai successo. You'll never succeed. Non avrai mai successo. You will never succeed. 
non avrai mai successo, literally means you will never have success. Not like in English where you use the verb to succeed. If you think that in Italian the verb would be succedere, nope, because succedere means to happen, actually. So, yeah, we use the noun, to have success, avere successo. And that's why you say you will never have success. I wouldn't say that to a friend, not even to a... Well, well, maybe to an enemy, yes, but I hope I will never have enemy. So, yeah, I wouldn't recommend you to use this phrase. Non ho bisogno dei tuoi consigli. I don't need your advice. Non ho bisogno dei tuoi consigli. I don't need your advice. You're a fool in this case because you never know if someone's advice can help you. On the other hand, if you want to actually ask for advice, just don't use non, that means not. So it will be ho bisogno dei tuoi consigli. I need your advice. That's way better. Non ho bisogno di imparare nient'altro. I don't need to learn anything anymore. Non ho bisogno di imparare nient'altro. I don't need to learn anything else. Basically, you know everything. And that's always bad to think that you don't have anything more to learn. It's a bad attitude and also a bad phrase to say I don't need anything basically, like I know everything already. Non sono pronto a imparare l'italiano. I'm not ready to learn Italian. Non sono pronto a imparare l'italiano. I'm not ready to learn Italian. You need to be ready for learning Italian. There's always something to learn. So, yeah, especially Italian. <laughs> so don't say that you're not ready. You're born ready. So tutto. I know everything. So tutto. I know everything. Saying that you know everything, it really makes you look like a fool because you can't know everything. Like, it's impossible, for real. There's always something that you don't know. If you say, I know everything, io so tutto, people will judge you as the one who se la tira. As the one who's pulling it means as the one who believes he's on top of everyone. Tu non sei molto intelligente. You're not very smart. Tu non sei molto intelligente. You're not very smart. Yeah, don't say that. I mean, who are you to judge people? If someone tells you that tu non sei molto intelligente, you can always answer, who are you to judge me? Chi sei tu per giudicarmi? Yeah, well, actually, it's a good way to distinguish between someone who can be your friend and someone who will never be. That was the last of the 10 phrases that make you look like a fool. Hope you will never have to deal with them, but I hope you enjoyed. So comment if you want and remember to subscribe. Ciao ciao, bye bye. Hi guys, ciao ragazzi, sono Desiree, I'm Desiree, and today I'm gonna tell you 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. Woohoo! Grazie, ma in realtà io non sono madrelingua. Thank you, but I'm not a native speaker, actually. So it probably means that someone complimented you on your Italian. Like, wow, il tuo italiano è perfetto. Wow, your Italian is perfect. Yeah, thank you, but I'm not a native speaker. Sì, grazie, ma non sono un madrelingua. If people tell you something and you answer in this way, means you have a high level, like high proficiency level of Italian. Good job. Ho capito completamente tutto quello che hai detto. I completely understood everything you said. Actually, maybe it's better to say Ho capito tutto quello che hai detto, I understood everything you say, because if you add completamente, completely, it's kind of too much. So, yeah, ho capito tutto quello che hai detto, they would be amazed, like, wow, you're great. But then people will expect that you know everything, like really everything, and maybe use also different words. I would stay with the stay humble, like, yeah, I got the sense of that, Sì, ho capito il senso di quello che hai detto. So you can always surprise people and not make them expect that you know everything. But that's my personal thing. Ho studiato italiano per dieci anni. I've been learning Italian for ten years. Well, that's amazing when I think that you did that for so long. Ten years is really long. 
but it's not really something to be proud of if you're still not able to talk a lot. So yeah, be careful with this phrase because you can amaze people because they would like admire you for how much efforts you put in your study. But yeah, if you have a high level or you feel confident in Italian or whatever language you're learning, you can say, hey, I ho studiato l'italiano or some other languages per dieci anni. And that's amazing. But yeah, just be careful <laughs> not to make the other person expect that you know everything. And then you don't, that it's completely understandable. But yeah, people would be amazed because you had so such a long patient, basically. You were patient and studied so long. If you haven't been learning Italian for 10 years, but less, it's you just say the number and then add anni, like due anni, tre anni, quattro anni. Uno, one would be anno and not anni. Or probably something that would amaze even more, it's when you say ho studiato l'italiano per neanche un anno. I've been learning Italian for not even a year and you know how to speak that, that's amazing. And yeah, people will be amazed. L'italiano è divertente e facile da imparare. Italian is fun and easy to learn. I can believe that it's fun for people to learn that, but I wouldn't say that it's easy. So if you tell a native speaker that you find it easy, I will be impressed because we have so many verbs, so many ir irregular verbs, and we have articles like feminine and masculine. I understand that it's really hard to understand. Like who, who establish what's feminine and what's masculine? But that's a secret. So yeah, if you find Italian fun and easy, quindi se trovi l'italiano divertente e facile, you amazed me. <laughs> Mi ci è voluto solo un anno per diventare fluente. It took me only one year to become fluent. That's amazing, for real. As I was saying before, I know Italian is not easy, but you know that actually, I didn't know that, I just learned that, like I was reading an article and it says that Italian is the fourth most learned language in the world. So we have English, Spanish, Chinese, and then Italian. I was really surprised about that. I don't know why so many people learn Italian, but if you find that fun and easy, you're welcome. Oltre a conoscere l'italiano, so parlare anche alcune altre lingue. Apart from knowing Italian, I can speak a few other languages. Yeah, that's great, but it always depends on, like if you can say, hey, how are you in 20 languages, that it's amazing. But like to amaze people, you need to have a high level. So in my opinion, at least in my case, I would say that studying two languages at a time, it's already enough. Parlerò italiano come un madrelingua in tre anni. I will speak Italian like a native speaker in three years. But if you're, you're not that confident, maybe don't say that because people will expect you to do that. Maybe people will be like skeptical and be like, oh, really? And how are you going to do that? Tell me, you master, Italian master. If you really know that you can do that, like maybe you are going to study abroad in Italy, staying there, spending there two years, also maybe one if you studied a lot before. I'm sure you will be fluent, so you can say that, but don't use it too much and <laughs> don't be overwhelming. If you want to say something not so strong, maybe you can say Vorrei parlare italiano come un madrelingua in tre anni. I would like to speak Italian like a native speaker in three years. And that's more acceptable. <laughs> People will like it more. So I suggest you vorrei instead of I will, instead of parlerò. Parlerò is I will speak. Vorrei, I would like to. So yeah, anyway, keep it up. Posso guardare i film italiani senza sottotitoli. I can watch Italian movies without subtitles. That's amazing for real. How many times did I say amazing in this video? Anyway, well, actually, maybe you can, it can be helpful to do that because you pay more attention on what they do and you're not like, oh, it's okay, anyway, I can read the subtitle. No, nope. you need to focus on what they say. And especially for Italian movies, like, I mean, Italian movies made by Italian actors. Maybe that's also a good way to learn Italian because they use a lot of gestures and you can learn like how to say I'm hungry. You do these on your stomach and it means I'm hungry. Yeah. Or these. Can we go? Yeah. So if you watch Italian movies, it's a good way to learn fun things actually and to learn 
Italian idiomatic expression, expressions, maybe. So yeah, that's a good phrase to amaze people, but also a good phrase, a good thing to do to learn, actually, Italian. Posso memorizzare circa 50 nuove parole italiane al giorno. I can memorize around 50 new Italian words a day. That's a lot, like 50. Whoa, <laughs> no, I would never be able to. But if you can, <laughs> do that. And yeah, tell that to people. But that means that like in one week, you will have 350 new words. Yeah, if you don't manage to memorize so many words in a day, maybe you can change the number and say, for example, posso memorizzare circa 10 nuove parole italiane al giorno. I can memorize around 10 new Italian words a day. And that's cool too. I mean, as long as you can keep it every day, it's great. I would say it's not about how many words you learn, but how many times you do that. Like if you really manage to do that every day, you're basically done. You will manage to be fluent in no time. Keep it down and then if you can make more, that's even great. Better, but still be humble if you manage to. Sto imparando l'italiano tutto da solo. I'm learning Italian all by myself. Wow. <laughs> Again, wow. How do you learn a language by yourself? If you're not attending lessons, you can watch videos online, like you are doing now, or read books, grammar books, but also normal books. And watch movies, listen to songs, try to speak it with person, like real people, maybe native speaker would be better, that will correct you, or even if they will not, because they're not teachers, but just people you want to talk to, like friends, at least you can see if they really understand what you want to say. And that's a good way to check the improvement you have done. That was it for the 10 phrases to amaze native speakers. I hope you get to the point where you can say one of them proudly soon. And I'm happy if, you can, if I can help you just a little. So com comment if you want to tell me something and remember to subscribe. Bye bye, see you soon. Ci vediamo. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.